This is a much more hip crowd than I'm used to. My idea of edgy is to wear socks that don't match. <laughs> sentences that I like. Here's a sentence I like. Someone has taught that cat to count is my belief for she has never failed to notice when we have sneaked off with the weaklings and the crooked born of her kittens and she has become more and more wily with each successive litter determined to raise them all, brunts and mutants all, in a behavior that to my mind must be proof of the basic tenets of Darwin, or disproof, which I cannot as yet decide. <laughs> I kind of like this one. Um, I think it's true, actually. I believe the perfect age for any son is a certain week in his 11th year when he balances briefly at the triangular intersection of self-sufficiency, unconditional love, and eagerness to please. <laughs> Anyone else have sons up? a bestial side to human nature, basic and primitive impulses in the bodies of men which clamor for satisfaction, and it must be a Christian comfort to ascribe such things, not to oneself or one's tribe, but to hairy giants and savages. <laughs> like this sentence, and it's, um, it's me. I'm a notoriously poor friend wherever tears are concerned. <laughs> the woman clapped the sleeve iron to the shirt front and ran the heavy, narrow nose along the gathered pleat that overlapped the buttonholes, and then the next pleat and the next, polishing the tucks to the seams, and she then and snatched a hot side iron from the stove and smoothed the shirt across the back in broad strokes and turned the shirt and pressed the yoke, and turning again, ran across the seams at the caps of the sleeves and pressed the narrow selvage of the collar band and flattened the lower sleeves and the buttonhole band and then placed the seven iron, the seven pound iron on the stove again and took the little sleeve iron and pushed into the gathers of the sleeve caps and smoothed the cuffs flat, turning the tip of the iron delicately into the small pleats at the wrist. Woo! <laughs> You, know, you don't have to clap after each one of these sentences. Here's a sentence I like actually quite a lot, and then I may go on actually and read a couple more sentences which sort of, you know, build. Bold. Have you ate? He said. And though I had done so, I ate again, which was only well-mannered. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been reminded of the little bit a lady eats, he, he did say at one point, which I suppose was meant to compliment. <laughs> I had earlier put away hash and ham, a mess of greens, hot cakes and oatmeal, as well as bread and donuts, and upon this second plate had made a dainty arrangement of bacon and potatoes and stewed fruit. My mind briefly turned over the question of how a feminist ought to answer such a falsity. <laughs> I've never lacked the, I've never suffered the lack of an appetite, I said in the end, which at least was true and might under the circumstances be considered neutral. In any case, I am a woman who 
who most admires the wilderness from the comfort of her civilized home, and in point of practice, my utopist fantasies will every time bring, bring forth a cultivated pastoral nature, with ripe fruit dropping from every bough, and not a wild tree in sight. <laughs> This is a book that was set in 1905 in the woods and mountains of Oregon, near Mount St. Helen. I don't know why I feel the need to tell you that before I read you this sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Today I was partnered to another of the Pierce brothers, the middle one, who is 30 or thereabouts, and whose name is Martin, a man with some whiskers and some girth who likes liquor and changes his shirt on the first day of the month. <laughs> and I have known such men all my life and stayed away from them. <laughs> Gracie, perhaps seeing only that we had reached a blind alley, snuffled through her broad nose and said, she it, what a stink. Now I'm going to read another sentence <laughs> that follows right on that one. Yes. I rate highly any woman who will freely swear and say the word stink. <laughs> Um, the woman in this book is a writer. Um, in 1905, she writes uh, sort of scientific romances and Western romances, um, rather wild sorts of things. So if I have given up trying to be a writer of the first rank, it cannot be due to strictly female limitations. My concentration upon the lesser subjects is simply due to laziness and perhaps to inferior powers, which a man may suffer from as easily as a woman. <laughs> <laughs>